I genuinely thought last week that we could save RAF Scampton. I thought the business plan that was in place was good enough for us to help to stop it. But no, it's going to go ahead. And today it's been announced that, yes, Portland in Dorset is going to get a barge, a big barge. It's called the, Billy, the, the Bibby Stockholm. It'll take just over 500 young men. They'll be housed on this barge. The local MP, Richard Drax, is absolutely enraged. I am unimpressed at the way the Home Office has, in effect, forced the barge and 500 single young adult men that will live on it onto a very sensitive holiday destination without having the courtesy to consult with anyone other than Portland Port. The barge will be a quasi-prison uh, with a bus taking small numbers of migrants at a time into Weymouth. Who will monitor them? What will they do? What if they don't return? These are just some of the questions to which there are no answers. Well, Richard Drax, I understand the anger. I understand the anger of voters, but... I'm not sure it's going to be a prison because those photographs we just played on your screen show that there are pool halls, there are bars, a quite up-to-date uh, modern washing and toilet facilities. But that is where we are. Now, there is emotion, always emotion in this debate, huge emotion in this debate, but there are also facts. I've got with me Tony Smith, the former Director General of UK Border Force. Tony, as ever, welcome. Uh, before we get to the problem... The first one being that 500 have come in the last two days, so that barge is filled. And the North Eye site in Bexhill, 1,200 young men. August the 22nd last year, 1,295 came in one day. But before we get to that, facts. Facts matter in this. And the Prime Minister claimed recently that the asylum backlog that we currently have was only half of the number of outstanding claims when Labour left government in 2010. And the UK statistics watchdog has come back in the form of Sir Robert Choate uh, and has said that actually the backlog, if we go back to 2010, was actually only a fraction of what it is now. At the time of asking, at the end of last year, the backlog was... 132,000, but if we go back to, to, to uh, 2010, it was 19,000. Is the Prime Minister deliberately misleading us, or would I be being unfair? I think the problem, Nigel, is a lack of corporate memory in the Home Office on all of these statistics and all of these figures. As you know, I worked there throughout that entire period. I worked there for 40 years. I lived through... So it is your fault? Of course it is. <laughs> But, I mean, like, so, I mean, the big problems were actually before 2010. That was the biggest intake we had was 2002, actually. That was mm. when we had these mm. sorts of numbers coming across in the ferries. So we did develop a very, very big backlog in the early 2000s. But by the time we got to 2010, we'd done a number of things in the UK border agency, of which I was part, which was called um, intake reduction. On the one hand, so we did a lot of work to put our resources into France to stop people coming across. They were coming in the ferries and on lorries those days, to be yes, fair, yes. not on boats. But we did a lot of work on the French side to reduce intake. I was part of that. And we did a lot of work on removals, Nigel. We sent a lot of people back. I mean, thousands every year were being oh, sent we, back. We had targets. I had teams of, of officers who had tar removals targets. And your job was to take cases from start to finish to removal stage. So how is it that it was politically acceptable under a Blair and then Brown Labour government to deport thousands of people who shouldn't be there and suddenly we can't get rid of anybody. Well, I think there's been a number of things that have happened in the Home Office in, in, in recent years, Nigel. The Windrush uh, j j scandal was w absolutely knocked them for six. These problems with the small boats, they haven't really been able to, in to get a grip of in terms of investment, in removals. A lot of the cohorts that are coming across now are really quite hard to remove uh, because they come from countries that simply refuse to take people back, even if they've refused asylum, which is where Rwanda came from. But the biggest problem of all for me have been all of these legal barriers to removal. Yeah. So every time as an immigration officer, the immigration officers watching this program will empathise with this, they arrest somebody and they'll say, right, I've got somebody here, he's, he's, as far as we know, he's removable. The next day there will be something that will crop up and then something else will crop up and then you saw what happened with Rwanda last year. You were covering that live yeah. Yeah, 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 as yeah. the plane was on the yeah. runway. Yeah. It, there was a lawyer in the European court uh, persuading a judge who had nothing about this really, ex hearing, the Home Office didn't even get to put their side of the story to say, well, no, I'm sorry, we need to... 
And this has been the problem. Delay, delay, delay. And, and the Home Office will get the blame for this. Politicians will say it's all the fault of the Home Office. They should clear these cases not really quickly. Not fit for purpose. Not fit heard for purpose. Years ago. The only way to clear cases really, really quickly is to grant them all. You, do you want us to people really well, well, want us to grant? But isn't this interesting? Because mm. actually, if you take Albania mm. for argument's sake, France and Germany last year issued zero asylum claims to Albanians, yet 50% of Albanians that come here get granted asylum status. So yes, you can clear the backlog by effectively let, letting everybody in. We have now deported some Albanians, I understand. Yeah, the, the, if you look at the latest figures, which kind of proves my point, Nigel, there is a direct correlation between intake reduction and removals. As we've started, and immigration enforcement, I know, have been yeah. tasked with the duty of finding Albanians, who now they've got a grip of all these outstanding claims, they've accelerated those through the system, and they've said, go and get them, and they're being sent back, visibly sent back. The Albanian intake on the boats has, gone, has dropped remarkably in the last few weeks because the word is out. Social media is a huge yeah. uh, accelerator in all of this. The prices on TikTok have yeah. even yeah, dropped. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, they have, oh, they have sales. <laughs> so, 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 so you I've just proved my point, I yeah. think, or this proves my point, that a concerted effort on removals. Have yeah. they got removals targets? Yes, of course there's places. It's really difficult in some countries. What about Rwanda? What about other countries we can send people? Is there a dedicated line of effort between casework enforcement right across from border force arrival, and then you've got these accommodation problems, because we're simply well, not equipped, Nigel, to be able to deal with these... Well, let's come back to numbers. that, because in the last week we've had the Scampton announcement, we've had the Essex former RAF base announcement, we've had the Bex Hill announcement, we now have the Portland Barge announcement. Uh, something might happen at Catterick, but no one's really decided, because it's the PM's constituency, what it'll be. So about 5,400 spaces have been cleared um, over the course of the last week, yet, you know, 5,000 could come in in a, in a calm week in June. This Saturday and Sunday, the forecast for the channel is flat calm. At least 500 will come. Are we not in danger this year, given the number of hotels that have already been used, the amount of private accommodation that's already been used, the shortage of barges and other structures? Are we not in danger this summer of simply being overwhelmed? So we need to go back to the asylum support system. That was set up in 1999. The plan always was that you would go to Section 98 accommodation, that's a hotel, yep. for just a week or two. Because whilst you made an application for Section 95 accommodation, which was provided by contract in communities, these were rented, self-catering, capable. Uh, you would stay in that until your application. Then you go to Section 4 accommodation, and then you'd be removed. So there was a process put in place, a conveyor belt, to deal with a certain number of people. Everybody's in Section 98 still. They're all stuck at the front end. The hotels are even bursting now. So there needs to be a fundamental review of asylum support. Don't forget, the only people that get asylum support are people who, who claim to be destitute. Institute on arrival. If you turn up from a boat and you say, oh, no, I've got a brother in, in Walthamstow yeah, who can yeah, after, yeah. you'll get bail to your brother's yeah, address. So yeah. we don't put everybody there, but it, it suits a lot of people, actually, to, to claim destitution and go into this elongated support system. And the government is playing catch-up the whole time. And I just don't know when they will catch up, Nigel. It's going to get a lot worse, a lot worse before it gets better. Final question, final thought, Tony Smith. Do you fancy coming back out of retirement? <laughs> Well, I'm passionate about the whole business because my, I just believe in the rule of law, Nigel. And I hear all these arguments about what's illegal and what's illegal. In my day, the laws were passed over there. And if a law was passed that said your duty as an immigration officer is to arrest and deport people who have no right to be, if they're lawfully here, coming lawfully, no problem at all. Very welcome. But there has to be a welcome in the hillsides. And I fear we have lost control. You've got even controlled migration, half a million a year now. These numbers on yeah. top, you can see why there's community <coughs> unrest, and that's why the government are prioritising it. But there's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of it's shutting the, the door after the, you know, the horse has bolted, I'm afraid. And they've really got to get a grip and get a grip quickly on removals. That's my view. Tony Smith, thank you. And there you are, Rishi Sunak giving you all these comforting words. He says by using the barges, by the way, we're going to save money. No, we won't save a penny. We might just not spend quite as much per night on their accommodation as we would in a four-star hotel. It's all spin, no substance. I promise you, it's going to get worse before it gets better.